Always ready, Cheryl. Go. Did I, did I speed up? We're on. Cheryl, we're live. It says live. Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I need to, I need to slow my... I need to slow my... What are, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I got all excited. I put the... I put the speed button on my treadmill. <laughs> oh, did you? You cranked, you cranked it up. I did. I went, woo! Oh, my gosh. Fantastic. A bit, a bit of action for a Monday morning. Thank you for joining us again, Tony. Thank you for having me again. And I, I will have to say it will probably be a little bit more subdued than the last time that we tried this. Well, a little cleaner. Not subdued. We're going to be certainly high energy, but a little bit cleaner, I think, Cheryl. Yes. Yeah. Much, much cleaner. It's a bit P, P, we just rate this PG. It is only uh, nine o'clock where I am and 10 o'clock where you are. So we yeah. should keep it all PG. It's a bit too early for, for all of that. But it will be full of excitement in any case. Mm -hmm. Because I love this topic. This topic is about sales. Mm -hmm. right? Whichever business isn't excited about the topic of sales is probably not doing much of it. <laughs> well, it's the lifeblood. Let's let's not beat around the bush. If you have a business that isn't generating sales, you're in trouble. You're in big trouble. And so it's about how do I go and generate more sales regardless of the business that I have, regardless of where I'm located in the world. There's a number of key fundamentals that you can do. But if you haven't got sales coming through, you've got massive, massive problems. We've got big issues. Um, Sean's joined us. Good morning to you both. Great start to take two. I know. Um, page 13 suits me plenty over morning coffee. I don't want to know what page 13 is, but oh, good morning, Anthony. Happy Monday, super crew. Um, love it, love it, love it. Um, I, I love the, the topic about sales and then we're actually going to have a topic about marketing this week. So this week is super, super, super charge, build and scale your business week. And actually, I think it's so good that we're starting off with Mr. Action Man himself, Tony. So, Tony, mm. I know you've got a playbook. Yep. And and we've got tips and tricks on yep. how not, not not necessarily tricks, but some really good strategies. Um, that's okay. That's it. That's it. Strategies on how businesses can, particularly small businesses, you know, can grow in their sales because like I said it's the lifeblood, right? But a lot of businesses, business owners are are so busy doing the whole, you know, being in the business thing. How, how do I get time to market myself and do the sales and all of that? You know, let's let's give our business owners some key takeaways, you know, at least a top sure. three. I sure. know we can talk about this all day until the cows come home, but let's give them top three. <laughs> Tony. Well, the, okay, so let me get into it. So the first thing is that if you've got an established business, you've already got customers, right? So there's three key words, and that is top of mind. You need to be top of mind. So are you top of mind with your existing customers? When I talk about growing sales, a lot of businesses will automatically talk about new customers. I want the new, the new, the new. Yeah, I get it, and that's important, but the new is shiny, the new is more expensive, the new is harder to acquire, whereas you've got existing customers, and we tend to ignore that. So the first thing I'm going to suggest to everyone out there is that look within your database. If you haven't got a database, get it sorted out. You might have 100 people, 200 people, 50 people, whatever it might be in your database. Say good day to them. Say, say hello to those people. Now, you don't have to physically call them up, although you can if you want to, but certainly from an email point of view, let them know that you're around. It's Christmas, perhaps, if you've got a business that has a, a seasonality element to it. Are you going to do a little Christmas something coming up, a Christmas promotion? Whatever it might be, here we are in the middle of November 2020, a great opportunity to let people know that there's, you know, what is it, five weeks to go, uh, six weeks to go until Christmas. So you need to let your existing customers know. Now, your question was around time. You have to find time, right? So we all have the same amount of time. We all have 168 hours in any given week. And regardless of if you're you know, Mark Zuckerberg or Bill Gates or you and I or, or whoever, we've all got the exact same amount of time. It's about how you leverage that time. So you need to make marketing and sales a priority. I know you're going to talk about marketing a little later on this week, but I mean, marketing and sales go hand in hand because you need to create the awareness. That's the whole marketing side of things and marketing to your existing uh, customer database. As I said, let them know, reach out to them, send them a gift voucher, send them a thank you. You don't have to always be selling to people. Send them a thank you. Hey, look, I know you've done it tough in 2020. Just want to reach out and make sure you're okay. 
You know, it could be as simple as that, but it's about top of mind. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my gosh, that Tony guy, I hadn't heard from him in a while, and it's great now that I'm hearing for Tony, but don't just do it once. Don't just do it once because this Tony guy came on here on a Monday morning and said, hey, you should do that. The art of it all is consistency, and I have many, many, many sayings and acronyms, but one of them is CAPE, you know, put your little superhero CAPE on, but CAPE is C-A-P-E, Consistent and Persistent Effort, right? And so that's how you become successful in sales, in marketing, in business, in relationships, in health and wellness, it, it, it's all the same. You need to be consistent. So you start, you start by doing one thing and then in two weeks, four weeks, whatever is the appropriate amount of time, you do something again. You do something again. So it's- Sorry, just on that point, Tony, um, I find that level of that consistency is one area that a lot of business owners do sort of um, have challenge, a challenge. Yep. It's because there's so much to do, right? And that consistency could be whether it's phone calls, whether it's emails, whether it's just that, that continual outreach through mm -hmm. whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook. Mm -hmm. So what are ways for, for business owners to keep that level of consistency? Because there's okay. so many priorities. Sure, sure. You know, so the, 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 first, the first way and the most effective, sorry, the most cost-effective way is to do it yourself, right? That's the first way the most cost-effective. And that is that you find the time. So you create some time. That might be that you find half an hour once a week. If you're doing zero marketing and you go and do half an hour a week, well, that's a massive improvement, right? And so for me, another saying, which is progress beats perfection. Always look to do something slightly more plus one. I did my Facebook live yesterday with Luke and we talked about plus one. If you're doing 30 minutes of exercise, stretch for 31. If you're doing 30 minutes a week of marketing, can you stretch it to 45? Can you stretch it to an hour? So the first thing is the quantity, that is the quantity time. I've got to find the time, right? We have time, right? Don't deprioritize marketing and sales because everything has a latency effect. What I mean by that is if you start to deprioritize marketing and sales, then in one month, in two months, in three months time, you're going to be sitting there scratching your head, pulling your hair out going, oh my gosh, there's no sales. Well, it's because you've deprioritized it and because it has a latency effect. It may not affect you today, tomorrow, next week, next month, but it may bite you big time in two months, in three months. So you always want to be you know, doing some, some little things. And again, those things that you had talked about phone calls, emails, etc. The other thing is I work with a, a lot of uh, franchise owners and what I get them to do is uh, drop uh, flies in letterboxes, right? But, but we, we kill two birds with the one stone because they go out for a walk, they walk the dog, they walk with their partners or their kids. I said, why don't you take a bunch of flies with you? Get your exercise, get your vitamin D, but dump some flies into letterboxes whilst you're out and about. Don't use that as the reason for not doing it. So you may have to multitask, multi-skill, you know, be resourceful of this. That, that's one of the first ways, right? The first one is to find the time. When you found the time, the next one is how you're going to leverage that time to maximum capacity, maximum potential. That's one way. Uh, if you have staff, then you can delegate to your staff members, right? So you can get people to help you and now you're able to leverage. If you're on your own or you have staff and you can't give anything to anybody, then you look outside your organisation. Right? And there's companies like yours, the Growth Hub Global, that will be able to help you. You guys help me with what it is that I do. In fact, you help me times two, right? And so it's reach out to people. There are so many people who are out there who can help you. Don't use that as a reason for not moving forward. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, but it's going to cost me money to, uh, you know, to go and get someone to do these, uh, these things for me for 20 hours a week, for 40 hours a week. Yeah, it will. But here's the thing, it'll cost you even more if you don't do it. It'll cost you big time in two months, three months, four months, et cetera. And so it's about recognising when's that right time to outsource. But you, you need to do this. You need to do marketing and you need to do sales and you need to do it consistently. Otherwise, you're going to be in, in a lot of trouble in, uh, in maybe weeks, months uh, into the future. Yeah, and absolutely. Um, and Anthony, who is um, our marketing consultant, Hello, Anthony. Yep. he has this questionnaire. And I remember um, one of the one of the outputs from this questionnaire was whether you're a ghost. Hmm. People even know you exist, hmm. right? And so if they don't know you exist, they don't know that you're offering a service or solution to your problem. Hmm. So it's really important that you're you're constantly, like as you mentioned. Uh, front of mind and so you've mm. got to look at the different strategies and mm. like I said, we'll talk about marketing but assume that we've got you know great great marketing, sure, sure. Got marketing and, yep. and we've got leads that are coming okay great right? okay so that's the marketing side and then you know, we've got sales 
once you have leads coming in, hmm. I've realized that's another challenge where people go, oh, they're either not the right people, hmm. I spend an hour on the phone with them and then, and then it's crickets after. Hmm. Three, for some reason, I just can't convert people. Sure. Well, there's, there's multiple things there, right? So let's talk about the one where you said, I'm spending an hour on the phone with people. Why don't you introduce a qualification period? So another acronym uh, that I use is a is a, a called CHAMP, C-H-A-M-P. And what that stands for, C-H is challenges. Uh, so what are the challenges that that prospect has? What, what, are the, what are the needs that they've got? The A stands for authority. Is that person the decision maker? You know, quite often we'll spend time with someone only to discover, oh, they're not even the decision maker. I've got to go and take this now back to my boss. So how do we get to the person who's ultimately going to make the decision as quickly as we can? M stands for money, budget. What's your budget? How much are you prepared to spend? In order to solve that problem, what would you be willing to pay for that? Right? Money, money, money. You don't have to go out and say, you know, how much you're going to spend. You can frame it up in a lot more positive way, but similar to what I just did. And the P stands for priority. Priority is when do you want to do this? Do you want to do it now, six months, 12 months, et cetera? So challenges, authority, money, and priority. So champ. And so then you go through a qualification process. So if you find yourself on the phone for an hour, how do you reduce that? How could you maybe introduce some automation into this? How can you capture details, perhaps ask some questions, and now you're able to, to go, you know what, this person here, they've got a problem, they're going to want to spend $5,000, but they don't want to spend it for 12 months. Well, maybe we treat them a little bit differently, uh, as in we just keep them warm over the next few months for someone who's prepared to, to do something like tomorrow and I need to go right now. And so there's different ways that you can, you know, prioritize the things that you do in your business because you can't be all things to everybody, right? And so, so that's the first thing. The first thing that's around the qualification side. In regards to closing of the sale, the simplest way to close the sale is to ask the question. Ask, honestly, it, it, people get to, it's like, I'm gonna talk about the features and the benefits and all the great things that I do. And then it's crickets. Are you prepared to move forward? Is there anything else that you need from me in order to make a decision today? You know, can I come around and book that in for Wednesday or Friday next week? Right? So now it's about ask the question to get you to move forward. But a lot of people are fearful of asking that final question. They've done an amazing job and they've showcased their business and they're fearful. And why are they fearful? Because they may get a no. And here we go down the whole fear funnel again, right? And so it's about you've got to ask the question because you, what do you want to walk away and have that hanging out there and be sitting in your office in a week's time going, I wonder if that person wants to move forward or not. Hmm, I hope they do. Right. So you want to be able to ask the question. And it seems so simple, Cheryl, but we just don't do it. Mm, yeah. I think that, and just going back, I want to go back to that, that whole qualification thing again. So, you know, we're, mm. we're going back to chance. I love sure, that. Sure. Acronym. I loved your, acronym. Sure. Um, but it is, you know, how do we work out then, um, the people who we want to qualify because you, you also mentioned we, we can't be everything to everyone hmm. but is there a process there that we need to be able to identify who our ideal customer is but what do we do with the other the the, the non-ideals you know and what's the ideal is that uh, you know do we frame our questions around yeah ideal so customer? So, so it depends if you, you, you know, a lot of us have target customers or ideal customers, but then we're prepared to also, so that's, that's our marketing message, right? Our marketing message goes towards our target market. But if we happen to bring up people uh, that attract to us uh, from the periphery, well, you have to ask the question, am I going to have the, the blinkers on and only bring people on that are in my target market? Or am I prepared to look a little bit wider uh, and further afield? And maybe that could lead me down a, particular, a different path. I don't know. So you've got to ask that question. If your answer is, I'm only going to go after those in my target market, well, then it's very simple. They either A, they fit the criteria, or B, they don't. And if they don't fit the criteria, is there someone else that you could recommend them? So you don't just go, no. You know, it's like, look, unfortunately, we don't work with uh, uh, you know, those types of businesses. But hey, listen, we've got uh, someone over here that we know will do an amazing job for what it is that you're wanting. Or we're not able to provide you that service, but why don't you go and reach out with this particular person? And so now you can, you don't want to leave that person hanging, you know, because it's about constantly adding value. Whether you work with someone in a paid capacity or not, it's about just being good human, right? And so it's about always looking to pay things forward. And if you can't help, uh, look to, uh, you know, to, to pass them on to someone who can. Yeah. And a part of the qualification process, and this is something that we've 
you know, just personally in our own business is, is identifying as well, when you, cause you mentioned budget, you know, what's, what's your budget or what's your revenue. Mm. And for a good, good lot of time, I was too afraid to ask that. Mm. And then I found myself having to sort of just have a feel to if they were the right person, but then I, you know, I realized in our business mm. that, 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 that client needs to have it needs, needs to have at least a certain amount of revenue to be able to, afford the business hmm. is that something that businesses should should you know business owners should be actively asking you know what's your budget what is your revenue and why is that important oh you should absolutely ask you know you should be because then you may have different offerings so what you know in order to solve that particular problem what would that be worth to you right it's not just a monetary thing as well that's the other piece so theoretically a sale happens or a tra tra sale happens when value exceeds price. Mm. Quite often, if you haven't been able to close on that person well then, or that business, then they don't see enough value in what you're offering. And only two things can happen. Either A, you reduce your price to a point where now that feels like value, or B, you stack more on to create more value. Now, my personal preference is the latter. Right? You don't want to keep being cheapest, 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 because that's a race to the bottom. So it's about how do I stack more value on for, for, for people, right? But you want to ask those questions because, like you said, you could think to yourself, oh, my gosh, you know, you have your, as you're having the conversation, your mind's going, this person seems amazing. And they get to the end, it's like, well, look, I'm prepared to spend $50 a week on that. Oh, mm. right? So you want to – that's why you have a qualification process – up front, but you don't say, you know, how much money have you got? You know, you, you talk about the opportunity to solve this and what would that be worth to you in order to solve this? Or do you have a, do you have a budget or do you have a range? You know, how much have you anticipated that something like this may, may cost you? Yeah. What have you factored in? Right, so it's not so much about their earnings. Like, yes, the budget is, is relative to the earning, but you don't have to ask what their earnings are. You know, they may not be comfortable in first meeting and letting you know that either. Yeah. But they'll have an idea of budget, yeah. right? Yeah. But again, it's about stack the value, right? So keep coming up with more and more things and give me... And now when you... And, and quite often it's about leaving the price to the end as well. Stack the value, the value, the value, value, value. You've created this massive value proposition. And now, by the way, it's X. And now it doesn't seem... with all. I, so I get all those things? Yeah, you do. Oh, well, that, that seems amazing. Versus if you go, hey, the price is X... Now, the whole time I'm thinking to myself, it's too expensive, it's too expensive, it's too expensive, it's too expensive. And all the wonderful things that you're saying about the features and the benefits and the, it's going in one ear and out the other. Yeah, yeah, because you've, you've got it cemented in your mind that it's too expensive already. Yeah, 100%, 100%. That's, that's the issue, right? So, and again, this is an experiential thing, right? This is about learning. And like you, you yourself said, you've got to have that difficult uh, question around money. And you need to do that as early in the process uh, as, you, as you, you know, realistically can, because you want to understand, is this something we can help with? Or alternatively, no, hey, look, and that's cool. Or maybe they're not seeing the value. Maybe they've got a budget of X, but your job is to convey even more value. It's like, well, I did have a budget of that, but by golly, that seems amazing if you can do all those sorts of things and that's going to save me blah, 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 whatever it might be. So how do you um, convey or build that value? Hmm. What does talk, that mean? Yeah, sure. So, so you, you talk about the benefits, right? So there's features, right? The features are it does this, it does this. But what does that mean to me? So um, from a, a person who's looking to purchase point of view, right, it's um, the radio station with them, W-I-I-F-M, which is what's in it for me. So it's about benefits and benefits of benefits. So, hey, there's this new widget, uh, blah, blah, okay, widget. Mm, that can do X. That will save you this amount of time. That will help you with uh, greater energy efficiency, right? So now that's the benefit. What does then that mean to me? Blah, blah, blah. So it's, you have a feature, benefit, but then if you can, if you've got a benefit of the benefit and you want to focus on the benefit of that, hey, by doing that, it's going to save you an enormous amount of time. Could you yeah. think of some ways that you would spend that time when you're freed up? Oh, wow. Right, so now you're starting to frame up different questions around that. But it's always the, the two biggest weapons in sales is listen, ask questions and listen and do it at least in that ratio. One of them, two of them. 
right? So listen twice as much. Now, my personal view is uh, to listen four times as much. Now, uh, I'm, I have a little internal smile because I know that when I do Facebook Lives and whatnot, that people see me talking a lot. But when people work with me, they know that I am um, an incredibly good listener and I um, listen, 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 listen. I hold back all of my um, assumptions, all of my thoughts until I've explored as much as I can from that particular person, whether I'm coaching, whether I'm with a prospect, whatever it might be. And then I can say, okay, so now based on da da da, da and we talk about what could be the solution for them. So, but you want to listen as a minimum twice as much as you speak. And questions, you want to look to ask the open questions, right? The open questions, certainly in the early stages, you want to ask open questions because you want to gather as much facts, as much information as you possibly can. So then you can shape the, the product as opposed to what a lot of people do is they'll come in and they'll say, well, this is what I offer. And they'll be straight down your throat with this particular offer without even understanding. Is that what they even want? Yeah. Is that, was that what the prospect is even looking for? Is that going to help them? So take the time up front. The more that you can spend time with that prospect in understanding whether, and again, it doesn't need to be through a physical conversation. It might be, you might get some information through a little qualification process, like a little, you know, and, uh, little question and answer form to give you a bit of a guide, right? So yes, there still needs to be the, the conversational piece, but it doesn't have, the whole process doesn't need to be in its in entirety a conversation. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, I, we've personally found what what really gets to the core of the value that you bring is 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 identifying the challenge, like you mentioned, the challenges, and how your your solution is able to take them from an emotional, you know, emotional challenge. So there's business challenge, but at the end of the day, that's an emotional thing that's that's causing it, yeah. and how your business and service is able to help resolve. But what that means to them when that challenge is resolved, like what would that make you feel? What would that mean to your business? What would that mean to you personally? And for people to go from, you know, we have conversations with business owners about, you know, overwhelm, I'm just doing everything, I'm just exhausted to, all right, what does it mean if someone was to be able to take away, you know, 20, 40 days of this repetitive thing you've been doing? What would that mean for your business? Oh my goodness, it'll free up so much time. I'll be able to spend, you know, how you've gone from that to that level of, oh, something's been lifted off my shoulder. And that's, that's you know, for, for any business owner there, you, it, it's about the journey of taking someone from the challenge and the problems they're having to, hey, this, is, this might be the solution, which is gonna be able to take you to where you want. Yeah, so you want to solve their problem. They come to you with a problem, right? And, and, you know, the skills of a salesperson today are very different to those of yesteryear. So yesteryear was all about being slick, uh, manipulative, uh, deceptive, uh, et cetera. Sales is not that at all. In fact, we're everybody, like people say, oh, I don't, I'm not in sales. Well, guess what? You are. If you've ever negotiated to which channel to watch uh, on the TV, you're selling. You're negotiating. If you if you're a parent, you are negotiating all the time, right? So we're all negotiating. Let, let's let's not say that we're not in sales because we are. If you're in small business, you're in sales. Your your core product may not be, uh, you know, as in a salesperson, but your core you've got to get your core product out there. You're in sales. So we've got to overcome this, uh, uh, you know, this this thought uh, that we put around sales because it's about helping people. It's about adding enormous value. Right? That's what selling is all about. So the skills are great listener, as I talked about, great at questions, being empathetic, really understanding what it is that someone uh, is going through, being curious. You know, again, links back to the questions. You want to be curious, be patient, right? You're not going to sell on the first time each and every time. It, it's just not reality. It depends upon, you know, what your products are. But the reality is it's just not going to happen. But be patient, Right? So a lot of people have this expectation that I'm going to sell on the first time when it doesn't happen. If your expectation's here and you finish here, well, you feel like crap. Right? It's a massive uh, drop. So I say to a lot of people, so again, for example, with my uh, say franchise customers, they spend a lot of time going to see property managers. And so I say to them, well, don't go and expect to sell. Why don't you go there and, and just have an expectation of saying good day? Could you do that? Yeah, I could. Great. So now, again, three words, top of mind. We want to go around there. We have a nice little pack. We go around and we say hello. 
And that's all we're doing. We're not trying to sell. We're simply letting them know that we exist. So go back to the point you said earlier around, you know, Anthony talks about ghosts. I'd say it's a little bit different, which is we're trying to sell a secret, right? And it doesn't work. So you've got to let people know. And so you just go and say hello. So you adjust your expectations. That's, that's one of the key things. Because now when you adjust your expectations, you're not going to feel like crap every time. Because if you expect to sell and you don't sell, and you expect to sell and you don't sell, and you keep doing that all the time, then you just feel dreadful. I think that the thing that you bring up there about expectations as well, and what, what, um, what I've found really effective um, and really successful salespeople do is they set the expectation and the agenda for the conversation. Mm -hmm. Being able to say, okay, today it's really just a discovery, just an exploratory session to see if it's something that we can do, mm -hmm. but not necessarily sell at that point, like you said, that initial introduction. Mm -hmm. You know, it might take a second call where you're sitting down and going, all right, what we're going to do, you know, today is work out whether we are going to be the right fit. And if you want to be able to work with me, mm. then from the very beginning, your, your, your prospect already knows that there's some sort of a decision that needed to be made at that point. Mm. So, you know, I think it's important that, that, that setting expectations from the beginning so that for you and the other person, you know what to expect as to, all right, is this going to be a sales call? Is it going to be a meet and greet call? Because it's a different mindset when you're going into th those sort of conversations. I mean, that's sort of what we've found. Well, it's framing the conversation. It's framing the, so frame the conversation. The other thing I would say is that you want to have a sales process. You don't want to wing this stuff. Mm. Right? So you want to have a repeatable process that you go through. And that repeatable process may just be some top line uh, topics that you want to cover off. Right, but you want to have something repeatable because now it's 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 consistent, right? Because the number of times that you if you wing it and you'll get to the end of the phone call or you get to the end of the face-to-face -face meeting and you'll go, Oh, if only I had a oh, I was gonna ask that question. You talked about planning, 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 planning. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So plan out the things that you want to ask, create a little process for yourself. What are the types of questions? Like you said, talk about the objective. Hey, look, the objective of today's meeting is blah, 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 whatever it might be. Have your own objective. At the end of this meeting, in your own mind, what are the things that you like to get out of this? Yeah. Right? So there's a whole lot of planning. It's not just, hey, there's a, there's a lead. Let's, let's give them a buzz. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. And that's where a lot of small business owners go wrong is that they, they wing it all the time. Right? So there's a whole lot of science in around the selling, but you've got to put the uh, preparation into making that happen. Yeah, and, and I'll add to that and say, don't be afraid to come up with a bit of a guide or a script for your calls as well, because the more that you're able to do that, the more you are able to guide people on a journey, because they want to be able to see that you're the, you're the expert and you know what they need. And so if you're able to guide them on that journey, they're going to be able to go, oh, I'm going to follow on on this journey. <laughs> Well, no, so absolutely says that, but also then you want to make sure that you get all the information that you're after. And there's absolutely, if you're on the phone, then it, you're going to have something in front of you. No one's going to see that script, right? And uh, as you know, I wrote another book, which I'm not even talking about that book, but another book for a whole different style of business. And that has a script in it, right? Because I want people to get into the practice of following through. It's, it's like karaoke. You want to follow the bouncing ball. You know, and so it's like follow through the various points that you want to make. You don't want to get off the end of the phone call and go, oh, damn, I wish I had have asked X or that or whatever. No, that's poor planning, right? So it's about following through uh, on the script. Also, having a script is wonderful because quite often conversations will head off in areas that you, you just didn't expect. And that's okay. But now having a script in front of you helps you now bring that back to the place where you want to take the conversation. Yeah. Um, let's go back to that point about process. And I see Mr. Luke Maroney's joined us again. He says back again. Hello, hello. Mm -hmm. um, process. Why is that? Um, why is that something that we need to have in place mm -hmm. to be able to scale? Well, because it's repeatable, because it's efficient, because it gives us a a roadmap. So we want to be able to have repeatable things that are happening. That's important to have process, right? You're talking about then from a scaling point of view, which is even different again, it's around itemizing out. So when you scale, you bring on staff. When you have staff, you want them to do exactly as you want them to do. The best example that I can give you of process is Maccas, 
you know, I, I worked in McDonald's, albeit a long, long time ago, and they have the standard operating procedures. And you go to uh, anywhere in the world, the Big Mac is a Big Mac is a Big Mac. And say what you want about the quality of their food, but I can tell you what, from a systems and processes point of view, there is no one better. And so it's about how, so that's how they get 15 year old kids, you know, making your food. They get 17 and 18 year old kids running a multi million dollar restaurant. They don't just do this by accident. Right, it's because there's a process. It's a repeatable process. A process is absolutely critical. Systems, processes, it's essential to any any business wanting to scale. But it's also essential to um, selling as well. Yeah, um, and, and I watched the movie Found It. Have you watched? Yep. Have yeah, watch it. Yeah, absolutely. That's Batman, Michael right. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Yeah. So so Ray Kroc. Yep. It was fascinating um, to see that. And it, it was, I, I was thinking about my business. I was thinking about businesses to go, oh my goodness, how can we all do this to a certain point to systemize what it is that we're doing? So it doesn't matter who goes in, who's doing it. Mm. And to be able to also, you know, the long term, a lot of people go into business because they want freedom. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go into business and are basically have bought themselves a job. Mm -hmm. which they're probably not being paid very well because mm -hmm. they're not, they don't have a system of sales in place. Yep. Yep. So um, it is important to be able to sit down and, and we're sitting now, we, we've got processes and systems in place. Mm. But we're sitting now with someone who's helping us put together our processes and systems mm -hmm. so that if it's not me that's doing the sales calls, there's someone else, but they know exactly what to do at each time. They know <laughs> what the templates are, they know who to talk to at that point. And it's really helpful to have someone outside of your business do that because sometimes we've got our blinkers on and we're so used to how we're doing things. Well, the ultimate objective is how do you make yourself redundant? So as a small business owner, and I know for a lot of small business owners, they'll be thinking, oh my gosh, what, what's this guy on about? But how do you make yourself redundant from your business? That has to be a goal. Now, now I am not in, in that position at the moment, but it's an absolute goal of mine. And I've got two, uh, you know, wonderful VAs uh, that are with me now. And, you know, we've also got others who help me from a graphic art point of view. But how do I make myself redundant? And how can all small business owners do exactly the same? You know, and so in order to have staff that are trained, that are consistent, that are following the process, there needs to be a written procedure. There needs to be a video or a loom video or whatever it might be so that now anyone can walk in and they can pick it up and they can run with it from, from day one or, or whatever it might be. That's also then once I've had my phone call, what do I now do? I've got all this information based on information. Which which way in the flow chart does it go? Does it go, you know, so it's about knowing what it is that I have to do next in my business. But that should be a challenge for and an opportunity for all small business owners is how can I ultimately remove myself from the business? Because um, so take, for example, me, like I'm a business coach. That's what I do. And I coach people. Uh, and so if I'm not coaching, then I don't have a business, right? And so for me, we're in the process of creating automated programs, automated programs that will sit there and that will just run forever uh, and will provide uh, value to, to, uh, to various clients. We have to do more and more and more and more of that because, again, it's about me taking myself out of the day-to-day -day running uh, of, of my business because if I'm sick, uh, if I want to take a break, uh, then, then uh, the income stops. Yeah, and 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 even like you know that point. You know, so many business owners, their goal, their short term goal, is just to be able to take a holiday. Mm -hmm. Yep. Without having to look at the computer or the phone or whichever, mm -hmm. you know, have a think about how you can do that, but still grow your business and have sales come in at the same time. Well, that's the late the latency effect. The latency effect is. You want to put things in place now that take effect in one, two, three, you know, four months time. You want to work hard on what can I do today that's going to set me up uh, for future success. Because the reality is if you're struggling with sales, whatever you do today is not going to give you an instant result tomorrow. It's just not going to happen, right? But it'll give you a good result in a month, in two months, etc. You know, go back to the whole ghosting or selling secrets or whatever it might be. You have to start that process. You have to start at some stage, right? Now, 
immediately, people aren't going to go, oh, great, there's that, that business coach guy. No, you've got to do it again and do it again. And I can't recall the exact stats. Uh, perhaps Anthony can chime in, but I think it's something around between eight and 12 impressions, give or take. There's different uh, articles on this. Eight or 12 times people need to see something from you to start to resonate with what it is that you do. Why do I do Facebook Lives all the time? because it's one of those uh, things to help me be top of mind. Why do I do something on a Sunday morning uh, with my good buddy, Luke Moroni? Because it helps me become top of mind. Why do we post constantly on social media? Why do we you do a whole range of things? Because it's top of mind, top of mind, top of mind. That's my business, right? And I'm looking to lead by example. So for all of our businesses, it's about doing the same. Now, what I will say is not everyone needs to go and put themselves out there and do videos because a lot of people are very uncomfortable with that. And so if you're uncomfortable with it, the first thing I'd say is, you know, you, can you lean into that? Now we all can. And I have my first YouTube video still sitting there for all to see. And it's a shocker from about three years ago, but I have grown, developed, uh, progressed. Uh, but some people just will not uh, ever be, uh, you know, uh, any good in front of video. And that's just, that's the facts. But here's the thing. They may, may be an amazing podcaster. They may be an amazing blogger. Right? They may have the art, so they're able to then communicate very, very differently. And so it's about self-awareness, recognising that how do I get my name out there? It doesn't have to be by me doing a video all the time. There's plenty of other ways, but you've got to do it. You've got to get your name out there in a variety of ways. Otherwise, again, selling secrets, being a ghost. Go to network meetings. You know, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be email. Go along to a local network meeting. Uh, join up meetup.com. Right? Join up various Facebook groups and contribute into the group. Let people know about who you are. There's so many ways that people can, can do that. Right? And that's the, that's the awareness bit. Then the other bit is, now that I've got the awareness, what are the things that I can do to grow my, grow my sales phenomenally? Right? And I talk about in my book, there's four key ways that you can grow sales. First one is new customers. We've talked about it. Anthony's going to cover it. I'll leave that to him. The next way is through what I call basket size. Again, it's a McDonald's terminology right? Would I like fries? Would you like fries with that? You go up, you go in there to buy a burger or whatever it is, five bucks, whatever it might be. Hey, would you like that as a, as a meal? You go to spend $5 and you walk out spending eight or whatever the prices are, right? But my point is that now I've been able to sell more to that person in that transaction. And that's just Maccas, but the same applies to everyone's business. It's like, is there something that you can find that then bundles together, Right? You can provide something extra over the top. So now I'm getting more from that, particular, uh, from that particular client. That's the first way. The second way is that if someone's only going to buy one thing, how do I get them to buy the very best thing? So there's a good, better, best scenario. Right? So if I'm going to only buy one thing, uh, well, for me, the best thing is one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, but then you can also do group coaching, which is a lot cheaper. Right? And so for me, it's about how do I migrate people up to buy the best thing. And again, think about in your own business, how do you go about doing that? What are the things that you've got to give people choice between, it might only have two choices, a good and a best, or good, better, best, right? That's the, the second one, which is how do I get the price up? The other way to get the price up is easy, take the price up, right? So uh, take a price rise. So all of a sudden, if you're charging 20 bucks for something, uh, charge 22. You know, uh, and quite often, there's it's an interesting um, phenomenon that happens when people take price up is now all of a sudden the perception around that product goes through the roof. Oh my gosh, that must be amazing because it's expensive, right? So a lot of people have this fear around price. It's like, oh, I can't possibly take my price up, right? Well, that comes back to their own self-worth. Whereas it's like, you know what? I know that I'm doing amazing things or this product does amazing things uh, and I'm going to charge uh, appropriately. They don't have to always be the cheapest because there'll always be someone cheaper than you. And that's, that's just a fact. And, and being the cheapest is a very easy strategy, but it's not a sustainable strategy, right? So go back to the point I made earlier, which is stack more value on. So now it's like, gosh, that's amazing value. Amazing, I get all those things, right? And, you, and um, a good example is what they do in, uh, you know, with say gaming consoles. Gaming consoles, they stack all sorts of things in there with games and with controllers and different, you know, the actual uh, console itself, et cetera. 
and they have all these different stacks. And so it's hard to compare now between Big W and, and you know, Harvey Normans and whatnot, because I've got all these stacks, it's creating this enormous value. But again, think about within your business, what is it that you could do to stack more in? So for example, for you guys, it could be, well, hey, we have this, this, this you know, basic service or this sort of, um, uh, you know, this, this introductory service, but now we do these other add-ons. You know, we can do for you your keep automated campaign. We can do for you your website management. We can do, so now I'm stacking a whole lot of stuff together. The third way is frequency. Oh, sorry, the fourth way, because I talked about the customers, uh, new customers. The fourth way, the last way is frequency. How do I get someone who's using my services once every six months to use my services once a quarter? How do I get someone who's using me once a year to use me once every, you know, once every six months? Now I've effectively doubled my revenue from that one client by do, simply doing that. What are the things that I can do to increase the frequency? And there's so many things that I can do to increase the frequency. So um, coffee shops do this all the time. Buy five, get your six for free. Hairdressers are now doing this sort of stuff, right? So that, there's a couple of uh, retail examples. Frequency, offer a promotion. Give me a reason to come back to you again. Give me a reason to spend from you again. A Christmas promotion. Right, it's that time of year. Give me a reason. Maybe I just bought from you recently, but now you've got this Christmas promotion. I know it's uh, uh, you know Black Friday's coming up. Uh, you know, so there's that. You know, have you got something that you can offer in, in that regard? Right, then we'll come into the new year. It'll be uh, you know the, the back to schools and the Valentine's days and Mother's days and and on it goes. So can you find reasons? Uh, perhaps there's some new information that you've found. Perhaps there's a new product that you've created. Give me a reason to come back to you. So the four ways that you grow your business is new customers, uh, basket size, uh, average sale price, and frequency. They are the only four ways that you will grow sales. Now, underneath those, there is a gazillion tactics that you can adopt, but at the highest level, that, that's it. There's only those four. Yeah, so much to take out from that. But at the end of the day, you've just got to take action on something and and keep some level of consistency with that um it's just starting sure a lot of people have enormous walls of terror in front of them and it's about how do i break down that particular wall and for me it comes down to and you know that i focus heavily on mindset it comes down to getting clear on the thing that you want people just are not clear on what they want it just I, I see it all the time well, I want to grow some more sales. Really? Well, if you got one more dollar, would you be happy with that? No, I wouldn't. I know you wouldn't, but you just said you want to grow more sales. How many more sales do you want to grow? Through uh, how you, you know, through new products, through, uh, you know, existing customers versus new customers, right? We put a whole range of specificity around the types of things that we want to do. You know, I was having a chat to Luke. I don't know if he's still on now. We're having a chat to Luke yesterday around planning, right? And the key is that you want to get clear on what it is that you want, and then you want to plan in reverse from there. So if you want to grow your business by 20% over the next year, that's great. But if you don't have anything between 20% growth and where you are today, you'll never grow your business. It may uh, accidentally grow. Uh, you may get lucky, but it won't happen uh, by design. This is about um, business by design. What business do you want for yourself? Create the thing that you want for yourself. It is so, so possible. It is in front of all of us. It's business slash life by design. I want 20% growth. Cool. What are the things that you're going to do over the, between there and then work your way back to deliver on that 20% growth? And then, so that's the first thing, get clear on what you want. And the next thing then is to put your left foot in front of your right and just put one step. Don't try and boil the ocean. Don't try and do every single thing uh, in one week. You know, um, Bill Gates talks about people uh, overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And people try and do it all in the first month. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do a website. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm going to do it all. And I don't do any of it. I get overwhelmed. And when I get overwhelmed, well, what is it that I do? I actually do nothing. I do nothing and I put my head in the sand and I pretend that it's not there as opposed to, you know, how do you bite an elephant? One, you know, eat an elephant one bite at a time. Just put your left foot in front of your right and do one thing. Just do one. If you have done nothing up until this point, do one thing. Spend five minutes, make one phone call, do one email, do one. And the thing is, oh my gosh. And you'll come out the other end of that and you go, well, that wasn't so bad. That phone call wasn't so bad. 
right? And then do another one and do another one. Don't try and go from zero to 100 because what will happen is, I see this, I call this the January the 1st syndrome. Every January the 1st, people wake up and they are going to climb mountains, get promotions, start a new business, lose 20 kilos, get off the drink, give up the smokes, get a new partner, whatever it might be. And they get to the middle of January and it all becomes too much for them and they go back to the way they were. As opposed to understand your why, get clear on your purpose, get clear on your goal, and then do small things, but do them consistently because that's more sustainable. And when you just keep incrementally increasing, it's not about going from here to here, it's about going from here to here and then to there and then to there. And guess what happens over a period of time? You get there, you absolutely get there. So another key thing with uh, selling is patience. It's patience with business. It's patience. It's, you know, my, my uh, Gary V who sits over my uh, left shoulder, uh, my guardian angel, uh, and that's my family. Um, he talks about uh, macro patience, micro speed. Macro patient being be patient with the outcome. But right now, work hard, work hard, work hard, work hard on a whole range of things right now. Do the right things, but be patient for the outcome. And it's so, so important. A lot of us have expectations. We're going to, uh, you know, get instantaneous results and it doesn't happen. And when you set your expectations up high, it's an incredibly long way down. Yeah. Can I just share, um, Tony, and there's so many points that you, you picked out here, but one in particular about the fear that people have about actually asking for business. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is something I reflected on um, over the weekend actually when the moon's either full or the moon's moon's going dark it's real reflection time for me so That's cool. <laughs> but it's good i had some time i had no, i had no kids no husband in the house and i said i sat down and went all right I had a big reflection time and i realized and this is you know um for, for a lot of people mm -hmm. the fear of rejection mm -hmm. all right fear someone saying no mm -hmm. and so and then i did a little bit of sort of reading further into it and, 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 and looking at some, um, some personal development, you know, one of the ways to get over that is really setting out those goals mm -hmm. because what it does, it's then it takes away the psychological and the sub subconscious things that are stopping you mm -hmm. and helps you focus on the tasks that you need to do to get over there, mm -hmm. over that fear. Mm -hmm. But it's also looking at each of those and going, you know, um, if I may, if if I want to get to where I, you know, where I want to be, mm. fear is stopping me. Mm. If I'm able to take these little steps, mm. to get here, mm. I will get there. Mm. I will get breaking that up, like you said, breaking that up into whether it's, you know, this is the the twelve month goal, months, weeks, you know, days. Mm. What I need to do to be able to do that. One hundred percent. I look at it as gates. So I have, uh, I, I play this out with myself and I play it out with my clients. So you've got your goal into the future and then you create your plan and in front of you, you've got all these little gates and these gates are closed. And every time you try something, you've got to get that gate to open because if you don't get the gate to open, then you don't get to your goal. So it comes back to how committed am I to this goal, this thing that's down there? How important is that really to me? Is it, am I interested? Is it a bit fanciful? Is it a bit of a dream, a bit of a wish? Or is it absolutely something that is so important to me and it's a burning desire that I'm going to make that happen? So now I'm confronted with a gate. So the gate is, hey, uh, I don't want to make this call because I'm worried about someone saying no and rejecting me. That's a gate. Okay, it's a gate. But here's the thing. Then if I don't do that thing, then my gate stays locked and I never, ever, ever get to my goal. And at which point I would ask you, as I was your coach, I would say, well, then your goal didn't mean that much to you because you're prepared to let one phone call stop you from proceeding towards your goal. Huh. Well, now that you put it like that, perhaps I should make the phone call. Hmm, perhaps you should, right? And so it's about now I want to get that gate open. But here's the beautiful thing. You crash through that gate. Guess what's in front of you? Another gate and another gate and a series of gates, right? And gates that don't even exist today that will just appear because they can. But each and every time, it's a test. It's a test of how important is that goal for you? Is it really that important? Are you interested 
or are you truly committed? And far too many people are interested in the outcome, they're not committed for the outcome. And Tony Robbins, who I refer to as the other Tony, he talks about when you're going to take the island, burn your boat, burn the boat. That is, you're going to take the island, there is no turning back. You're either going to die on the island or you're going to claim the island, but either way, there is no turning back. You are committed, right? And so take that same analogy into what we're doing. When you get into small business, the fact that you're getting into small business, whether it be a side hustle or your, or your, your, um, your main source of revenue, to get that far, you have made phenomenal, um, showed phenomenal courage. You have overcome a lot of fear because the majority of people will never, ever, ever get to taste that. The majority of people will sit under the blanket of security in a job. So the fact that you're out there doing that, you need to reward yourself. You know, you need to recognise that you've done an amazing uh, thing to get this far. So if you got that far, well, don't let a phone call stop you because you've made this enormous sacrifice to either invest in a business if you've bought one or start one from scratch or whatever it might be, you've got to buy something to get started. Don't let a phone call stop you. Don't let an email stop you. You know, get out there and chase after the thing that you, uh, that you want to go for. And again, it comes back to remind yourself always, why did you start in the first place? What was the reason? The reason when you said, you know what, I'm done. For me personally, I'm done with work. That's it, I'm out. Uh, and I made that decision long before I left, but it's a case of, well, I'm deeply connected to why that's the case. Yeah. And I remind myself that constantly. It doesn't mean that small business is easy for me. No, it's not easy at all. It's incredibly challenging, right? But I'm incredibly resourceful to come up with ways to get through those gates, get through those gates. Each and every day, I've got to get through the next series of gates. Otherwise, I never, ever, 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 ever get my goal. Three guarantees in life, death, taxes. And if you don't do the thing that you need to do, you'll never, ever, ever get your goal, right? And so if you do the thing you do, there's no guarantee that you're going to achieve your goal either. So, but it's about having the belief and the faith that, you know what, when I do this stuff consistently enough and persistently enough, when I'm open to learning, when I'm open to pivoting and adjusting as required, then I'm going to have a phenomenal outcome. But if you let a phone call stop you, then you're never, ever, ever going to get through the gate. And that's where you did the, the mic drop. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's a big mic. It's an expensive mic. It's heavy too. So uh... the pretend mic. So um, extremely helpful tips, some real nuggets of wisdom there. How can we get our hands on the sales playbook because I know there's a whole lot of stuff in there. I'm going to put the link in the show notes. So straight after this, I'll put the link into the into this episode and please dive in there, get it. It's almost 40 pages of goodness. Like, you know, a lot of people will give away maybe a one page or whatever. This is like 40, 39 pages to be precise. 39 pages of information that can fundamentally change your business. Yes, it's a lead magnet into what it is that I do. But here's the thing you don't have to work with me. There's enough in that book for you to get all the information and go and implement it yourself. If you do want to work with me, then please uh, follow along and reach out. But there's 39 pages of goodness that you can you know, put into your own business and start to generate significant changes from day one. And the book is called, you know, grow your business by 50% in six months. And I take you through the steps that you can do to get growth of 50%. Now, who wants 50% growth in their business, right? So, you know, we all do. So there's things that you've got to do. It's not going to happen by, uh, you know, by miracle or, or you know, it's, it's going to take effort, planning, consistency, uh, you know, getting knocked down, getting back up, but as long as you get up one more time and you get knocked down, then you're still in the game. You're still in the game. And, and that's what it's all about. So I'll put the link into the show notes. Please uh, dive into it. And, uh, and I'd love your feedback too. So it's not just, uh, this is not just one way. This is a, hey, please read the book and please give me your feedback. I'm, you know, feedback is fuel for me. I'm always open to new ideas, new concepts. How could I make things better? If you love it, give me that feedback too. Uh, but uh, certainly please reach out to me and let me know your thoughts. As a matter of interest, are there any questions or comments, Cheryl, that have come through? Yes, so um, more, more comments just in general about, um, Sean says, great, great session. Matt White joined us. Um, nice work, guys. Great content as usual. Systems, processes, and scaling. Um, uh, 
Uh, Nigel says, well said, Tony and Cheryl, I will come back and listen to replay. I'm just going to make a phone call. I sh should have made this morning. Thank you, inspirational. I mean, and, and that's the other thing as well, you know, in terms of the, the, the playbook that Tony's got, you know, this is what we call a lead magnet. We've talked about this before, you know, ebook, lead magnet. Mm. I mean, how are you um, attracting your target market? And this is, mm. again, something that, that, that Anthony and uh, we'll, we'll talk about in a bit more detail. Mm. But if you're, you know, if you want to be able to create an ebook, it's something that you go, oh, I don't have time. I don't have the, I don't have the ability. I don't have the design sense. Mm. Again, ask yourself, are there things that you need to outsource so you can delegate to someone else? Mm. And I'm going to ask Tony, did you design and put all the ebook together yourself? Yeah. So, so let me let me tell you the process. So I wrote it. So I went through and I wrote it on a Word document. Uh, so the ideas came from me and came from you know twenty five years of, of you know selling. So that's where it came from. I gave a Word document, and then I have two uh, virtual assistants who work with me through your organisation, Cheryl. And I gave this to one of them, and she was able to take my Word document and turn it into something that quite simply is is miraculous, and I could never have done it. Am I creative with solutions for business ideas for selling? 100%. Am I artistically creative? No, I'm not. And so it's about recognising what my strengths are and recognising areas that I'm not good at and going, you know what, you're great at the artistic stuff. You take my content and you do your thing. And uh, and look, it doesn't mean that we get it right the first time. So we have a whole lot of you know, back and forth and we have systems and processes the way that we work as a team within my business. But after a few iterations, a few back and forths, uh, we were able to bang it into shape and we've got the product that you now see. So it's about you know coming up with a way that I can get this out to the world. If I was sitting there from an artistic creative point of view, I had to look bloody awful. Uh, and B, I'd probably still be sitting on it, quite frankly. So whereas the the idea and, and from an ideas point of view, you know, so again, go back to how do I get the ideas down? I actually speak them. I know this will come as a shock uh, for people, particularly Luke, if he's still hanging around, but I actually speak them. So I speak them. I speak the ideas uh, into an app called Temi, T-E-M-I. That then converts things into a Word document. Then I bang that into shape. Now I've got my words I've done. I add a few extra words in, then I send it over to my team. So it's about how do I drive efficiency? You know, you, uh, you know, I love the fact that you call me um, action man, and I, and I thank you. I appreciate it. But the reality is that I um, spend time and I'm listening for what are the 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 um, what's the technology? What are the apps that I can adopt in my business to make me more efficient and more effective? And I know that I'm a far better talker then I am a typer, right? I'm a one finger typer. So I can just talk ideas into, a, into my, like literally into my phone. There's an app for your phone. I literally stood there and just talked the ideas into my phone. Press, uh, it cost me 25 cents per minute. So I can't recall how many minutes it was, but it maybe, maybe it cost me three or $4 in total. And there, there, there it is. Then it comes across as a Word document. You bang it all into shape. You, you know, get rid of the ums and the ahs and all those types of things. You, you make changes like you would any document, but now I've got a massive head start because I've talked about it. Then I hand it over to someone and they, they do the rest, you know, and, and then I've got someone else who helps me from an automation point of view, right? So then you've got to put it into an automated marketing program. So there's a number of steps here, but hey, guess what? Three years ago, I knew none of this existed. You know, I used to do my own social media. I'd have a job, uh, you know, I'd go to my job and I'd come home and I'd do my social media. I didn't do any of that. I didn't discover all this from day one, right? but I've learned through the school of hard knocks around what it is that I need to do. So, you know, you can either A, you can get out and you can try and figure this stuff out yourself through the internet and there's so much knowledge available, or B, if you want to speed things up, then you want to speak to someone like me or speak to someone like Cheryl. And yes, there's obviously costs involved. Though we, I give a free 20-minute uh, chat to everybody. But here's the thing that when you, uh, if you engage me, then what you're engaging is um, 25 years of experience. Plus also, we're going to speed the time up. We're going to compress the time because guess what? I got to made all the mistakes over the last three years. So I don't want you to go and spend the next three years making the same mistakes I did. Uh, I can, I, we can get through those mistakes in about, you know, 20 or 30 minutes. So it's about then recognizing what are others doing and how can I then leverage that to speed up my own journey. But yeah, no, I didn't do it all myself I mean, that was a 20 minute response to your question but uh no i, I use people around me yeah and, and i mean that was the, the whole idea that if, if people are finding that you know if time you know if if oh i don't have this this 
that these are all the things that are not allow me to achieve what I want. It's not so much, you know, don't focus on, on what you can't do and what you're restricted or what your, ta- you know, lack of talent is. Um, be able to resolve it and go, okay, what is the solution? What do I have available in front of me? Leverage that and come up with the outcome that I want to, you know, mm-hmm. recognize, like you said, your strengths um, and recognize what your strengths are and what other people's strengths are and where they complement you. Bring that together and it becomes a beautiful, you know, a beautiful outcome. Absolutely. There's one word that comes to mind when you say all that. It's called resourceful or resourcefulness. And, and how I interpret that is how do I find a way? What do I need to do to find a way through the gate? the gate that's in front of me and how do I make that happen? And, and with the a never give up and never die attitude of I've got to make this happen because I know that getting a book done and getting people to read my book is going to add value and whatever, you know, whatever my, my reasons are, but it's about how do I find a way to make it happen because I don't have this skill set or that. And, and like you said, you know, thoughts become things. When I think I can't do something, guess what? You won't. You won't. You will find that everywhere. You will find reasons to not do that something. And that's what most people do. Well, I couldn't possibly do that. I couldn't possibly write a book. I couldn't possibly, uh, you know, do what you did, Tony. Well, guess what? I didn't think that I could do any of that three years ago either. But I'm doing it and I'm doing it all the time. We've got even more exciting stuff in front of me. So, you know, that's great, but the best is yet to come. And so it's about, uh, you know, being resourceful and determined and committed. Go back to my goal. My goal is too big to let it go. It's too big. I have every single great gate, I've got to crash through it because, and I've got to find a way. I've got to find a way. And the same with sales. You've got to find a way. You've got to find a way to make sales. And how do you do it? And what's a way that's comfortable for you? And you, you, you know, and you ask questions and you create strategies that help you grow your business. But as a small business owner, you need sales coming in the front door. There is no ifs, buts, or maybes about it. Otherwise, you have no business. Absolutely. So if you want to be trained on the right sort of tools and processes for sales um, and being able to explode it through your business, Tony Meredith is, is the person to speak to. If you want to come up with a process around how you automate your systems and things like that, you know, that's what we help with at the Growth Hub as well. And we'll sit through with um, a system strategy as well, come up with, you know, what your whole customer journey is. Um, and if you want to find out how to market to your target market, Wednesday, we're having a session with Anthony and we're going to talk about the new marketing course that we're going to be great, well, which will be fantastic for small businesses because we know marketing strategy, content strategy is one of the top things that small businesses really challenge, have challenges with. So bring this all together, 2021. If you're implementing any of what we're saying here and sharing, 2021, no excuses, no excuses. Mr. Tony Meredith, fantastic to have you here on a Monday. As Mm -hmm. always, I'm super pumped. Um, I'm sure anyone here that's listening in is still still there as well. Thank you for all your time again. Thank you. Love having you here. Um, And don't forget, we need to share your link because that's a fantastic playbook. I'll I'll, I'll do that straight after this. So uh, thank you, Cheryl. Wonderful. Thanks to everyone who's tuned in, uh, either live or is about to tune in. Uh, So thank you and good luck uh, with everything. And share with us your, your, you know, if you've implemented anything that we've spoken about, share it with us, you know, share your goals as well. What, what, What support that you need to be able to get you to that point. I love it. Very good. Bye. Bye. Have a great week. Ciao. See ya.